The Raven Airfield, I don't show Raven a ton on the channel. It's just not a watch that's out there just constantly blasted and blasted and blasted. The owner, Steve, he, he's very busy. You know, he's, he does like, you know, special releases and batch releases like a lot of micro brands do. Um, it seems like there's more coming from Raven recently than in the past. There was a heavier focus on Finch knives, which are also really cool. Um, I've owned quite a few Raven in the past, but I want to talk about the airfield. So right here, the white dial one is the one that I actually bought at the Worn and Wall Wind Up Show in Chicago. I have a gray dial one here, and you can see how different they are for sure. So there's many different colorways and many different designs, and it really dramatically changes the look of the watch. You can clearly see that here just with these two examples. But I'm going to show the white one as we talk about the size, just because it's easier to handle on the FKM rubber. But the case size on this is 39 and a half millimeter wide, although it does kind of taper in a little bit. So, but I took the wider measurement. So it's actually on the wrist, it's going to wear a little bit more narrow. The lug to lug is a 48 millimeter. And again, the same thing kind of happens. Um, well, that's on the belly, but uh, it doesn't really turn down. It has a flat plane and everything, but the 48 is a good number. You have drilled lugs. The thickness I measure with the single domed sapphire crystal. Single dome typically means there's a slight dome on the top side, and it is very slight. And then it's flat on the bottom side. Sometimes you can do it the other way around, where it's domed on the bottom side and it's flat on the top, but that's more often than not the case. So in this particular case, it is slightly domed. You can see it there clearly. And then it's a flat crystal on the bottom side. And that's why you get that crazy distortion like that, which I still have yet to do a video. I need to get the crystals and show you guys what that actually looks like. So when I say it, you can actually see it because you'll be able to see both sides of it. That'll happen in the future. So anyway, it's 13, 13 and a half mil thick, 20 millimeter lug width, and then the bracelet actually tapers down to 16 mil. And then the clasp, you have four micro adjusts signed, and it's all milled out, fold over keeper. Not my favorite design, but it gets the job done. The crown is a 6.4 millimeter crown. It is signed with the Raven from um, the Raven logo. And then you can see there's a little bit of shape to it. It's not like a cupcake or anything. It's more of like a barrel kind of look to it. Plenty of traction on there. Very easy to handle and manipulate. It is hacking, hand winding movement. You can see there's a little reflection of the AR right there. You can see the AR coating. See how it turns blue. The movement inside, these are both no date ones. So they actually have the Seiko NH38. If you were to do the date, it would be a NH36. Part of the reason I went with the white is on the white dial one, you actually have that applied Raven logo at the 12 o'clock there. Not all of them get that. Like the gray dial one, I'll show you up close, does not have that. But... Depends on what look you want, right? I like white dial watches. I like orange seconds hands. It just has a nice pop. And the, this was the last one I think Steve had at the show. Pretty sure. I was able to take it right there. I actually ended up wearing it later that day. On this FKM rubber with matching hardware. So that was really nice to have. I haven't even sized the bracelet on mine yet. But on this one you can see it's just you know printed on the dial. It's not an applied logo up there. You also have a black, nice black handset there with a pop of yellow on the second hand. This one, Steve told me that he actually assembled this one. There's quite a few of them he actually assembled. Some of them come already specced out, but this one he actually assembled. So there you go. They are limited. 2021, number 174 of 300. Probably just orders a bunch of case backs and then assembles them whatever configuration he needs to do. I didn't see what the white one was. 2021, this is number 143 of 300. So there's only 300 of them, you know, in different color configurations. So when they run out, they run out. Pretty similar. It's not the same case. So you can see where a lot of these micro brands and other, you know, big brands will do it too, where you can do a dye bezel or you can do a fixed bezel. You can do different options. This is not the same case. It is a different case, I believe. Could be wrong, but I'm most likely right. 
So this is a, a trekker, which the trekker line is awesome too. So let's um, pop this on wrist. I'll show you the gray one on wrist first. This is what it looks like on my seven and a quarter. This is not size, this is a brand new watch. So there's what it looks like on my 7.25 inch wrist. This is why I went with the Airfield guys. It's like the perfect size. 39 and a half by 48. Nailed it. It's perfect. It just works on so many different wrist size, including mine. And then of course, the white dial one. And I've tried this with an orange strap. I just, the black strap I think looks the best on this one because you have that black chapter in there. And then you have this little ring out here that's actually black as well. So it just, to me, it just looked better, more tuxedo looking, you know, the just black and white panda, whatever you want to call it. And then if we take a closer look at the bracelet, you can kind of see there, just kind of a three link screw pin hardware nicely done captured spring bar so easy to swap out let's kill the lights after we give them a quick blast with the uv light you could see there's different chapters on there too i'm assuming you was able or able to see that but so this is where you would maybe not want the white dial because the arabics are just black on there they're not loomed out like they're loomed out on this one so um, in low light applications, I do like the loomed out Arabics more so than I do like just the, the plots and then the triangle up top, but loom isn't mattering to me as much as it used to, you know, it just, I don't really need my watch to always be uh, loomed out. If it's a diver, yes, I do expect it, but on a lot of watches, it's just not that important to me anymore. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you on the next video. Oh, I forgot to mention price. I think these are like 420 bucks, so well under that $500 price point. Great value. Check them out. Link in the description.